Welcome back. In this video, we're going to do testing on post requests. First, we'll make a group for our tests. We'll give it a description of post, and then add a closure to run all of the tests in. Let's write our first test. In this test, we'll check for an empty post body and expect that it will return a 400 bad request. So first I'll make the request. I'll await the harness. Remember the harness is up here. The testing harness has an agent, which we can use to make the post request. The path that we're going to make the post request to is forward slash words. Then the body of this request will be empty. So, Back here we had a post request to words, and this was the body over here. Normally that's what we'd have in the body. What if it's empty though? Let's expect that the result... Oh, back here I should have called that response. Let's expect that the response dot status code is 400. Let's run this test. And it passes. Let's write another one. Copy this test. This time, let's say that the post body with the right keys returns a 200 OK response. So remember that our first key was word. Let's just call it value. It's a string. And our second key was content. And content contained a map. So the map also has a key and a value. Let's pause here for a second and look at our word class. It's a managed object. And so the primary key is ID. Aqueduct will auto increment this primary key when we make a post request. The second part is word and word will be matched to the word column of the database table. Note that this is unique. So if we try to add the same word twice, we'll get an error. And the third one is content, a document. So we use a map for content. But look in the words controller and see that we're ignoring ID. So that's optional. We don't need to pass in ID. Aqueduct will auto increment the ID. So we just need word and content. Let's say if we got those, we should expect to get a 200 response. Let's test that. And it passes. How about with the wrong keys? If the keys are wrong, or if one of the keys is wrong, we should expect to get a 400 bad request. Let's set the key to hello instead of word. Run that. And that passes. It was a bad request. Let's run another test. This time, instead of a bad key, let's say a missing key. And let's just completely delete the key. Run the test. Yes, that's also a 400 bad request. 
This is all Aqueduct handling this for us. Let's do another one where the content is a null value for the map. I would also expect that to be a bad request. Let's change the key back to Word for the first one. Run that. And it passes. Aqueduct knows all this because we're binding the word to the request. In this test, let's test the type. So word should be a string, but let's give it an int. Let's expect that that will also give a bad request. And that passes. It was a bad request. Again, this is Aqueduct working for us. This all comes free. Normally, if we try to insert something, we get a 200 OK. But if you try to insert the same thing again, you get a 409 conflict. The reason that's true is because our word was set to unique, so Aqueduct automatically gives a 409 conflict. But let's just test that here. So let's say post the same thing twice returns a 409 conflict. So now we have to actually post something twice. I'll copy this. First one we'll call response one, and then the second we'll call response two. So we expect the first time we post something, as long as it's correct, let's change that back to a string value. We expect that one, let's change them both to value. We expect the first one to be a 200, but the second one should be a 409. Response to status code. Let's test that. It passes. Great. Let's run all of the tests by going to group and then run tests. All the post tests pass. You can run both groups at the same time by right-clicking Main and Run Tests. And all of them pass the Git tests that we did last time and the post tests that we did today. In the next lesson, we'll do some put request tests.